This episode of Bulletproof Cashflow is brought to you by Realty Dynamics. Learn how people like you can build substantial passive income while creating wealth for the long term through real estate investing. Visit rdyne.com. That's R D Y N E.com. And now we can start doing marketing. Again, keeping it edutaining. We're not spamming them with deals all the time and saying, give me money, give me money. But we get that edutaining communication going out. Drip, drip, drip. Every single week, something's coming out. So, for example, first week of the month, maybe it's an electronic newsletter, then maybe it's a blog post, then maybe it's a video log, then maybe another blog post. So, drip, 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 something different every single week. And uh, that's what's going to get people starting to pay attention, starting to open your emails, creating that curiosity, getting them to book those meetings with you. Working because you want to, not because you have to is financial freedom and we want to help you create that welcome to the bulletproof cash flow show we're going to teach you how to achieve lifetime financial freedom through real estate investment your host is a multifamily syndicator and property developer he's done deals reaching into the hundreds of millions of dollars you'll hear from experts in all aspects of real estate investment finance finance development and management Everything you need is right here. This is the Bulletproof Cash Flow Show. And this is your host, Augustino Pintus. Hey everyone, it's Augustino. Whether you're a new capital raiser or an experienced syndicator, raising capital is always at the top of mind when you're putting deals together. Now, real estate is a hugely capital-intensive business, and your ability to raise private capital, private money grows exponentially as you get into these bigger and bigger deals. Well, our next guest knows all about this. He began his real estate investing career back in 20, uh, 2013, doing um, uh, doing many, many deals. Uh, he did, in, I think was it was uh, 18 deals in 18 months. So he did a lot of stuff, a lot of deals very, very quickly. Now, he is an actual practitioner, and today he helps real estate investor entrepreneurs grow their portfolios by attracting investors and raise private money. Now, using his proprietary money partner formula, he and his team work with real estate investors to provide turnkey marketing services to help them get the equity they need to shut deals down. Now, he is also a best-selling author and host of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast and his newly created How to Raise Capital 101 show. Now, with all that, I'd like to welcome my good friend, Dave Dubow. Dave, buddy, thanks for coming on, man. Agostino, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me, my friend. You bet, you bet. Yeah, good to see you too. It's been it's been a long time. It's been a long time. It now, has. yeah. Now, guys, if you like what Dave has to say, you can reach him via his contact page at davedubo.com. We'll include a link in the description. Uh, all right, Dave, go ahead and tell the listeners uh, a little bit about um, about how you got started. Maybe reintroduce them to to you and um, and uh, about your journey too. Yeah, well, thanks very much. So you shaved a few years off me there, my friend, which I appreciate. But I actually. I actually started way back in 2000 and 2001 actually was my mm. first kind of foray into real estate investing, believe it or not, in San Jose, Costa Rica. That's where I was uh, living at the time. I spent a decade in Latin America living in Costa Rica and got into what we would call a couple of little pre-foreclosure pre type deals down there. Did pretty well with those. Then I uprooted my Costa Rican family, my Costa Rican wife and our two little kids, and moved them back to Canada, which is where I'm from. And uh, after that, trauma subsided. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a culture tropical shock right there. <laughs> tro tropical paradise, frozen hinterlands. <laughs> yeah. I had to figure out what I was going to do for a living because I'd been self-employed for a long time. I was pretty much unemployable. Hadn't been able to sell my business down there, was, so I was pretty much broke. And been away from North America so long, I had zero credit. Not even bad credit, just no credit. So I saw one of those, you remember that, you're probably too young to remember this, but those late night infomercials. Do you remember those, Agostino? Oh, sure, sure, sure. You yeah. too can get rich in real estate with little or no money down. Uh, they, they, those guys, perfect. Are, they're all over Facebook now, those guys. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Well, I was, that was way before <laughs> Facebook. Right. So I was up with insomnia watching TV, trying to figure out what the hell I was going to do to make a buck. Saw this and said, perfect, little or no money. That's exactly what I've got sent away for this big stack of binders and VHS tapes and God knows what. And went through all this stuff and uh, and took action. 
And very quickly in the, in the small city I live in, we had about population, about 80,000 people. I was able to do 18 deals in my first 18 months, which may or may not sound impressive. And for a guy of, of your stature and the kind of deals you're bringing down now, nothing, nothing like that. These were crappy little single family homes and mobile homes and mobile home parks and different small deals. But got very good at finding and attracting motivated sellers, doing creative type deals, all that kind of stuff. Eventually, I transitioned out of that into more traditional real estate investing, ended up doing kind of a single family home strategy. And that's when I first realized, hey, this whole other people's money thing is would be kind of handy because I quickly ran out of my own money and quickly ran out of my own cash after, you know, most of us like we do, we, we self-finance our first couple of deals. And then that's when the perfect deal landed in my lap. Have you ever had that happen there, August? You know, you, no. you, you don't have the money and then this beautiful deal lands in your lap. And I'd heard all these gurus say, hey, just find a good deal and the money will magically find you. Yeah. If you know whoever said that first, let me know because I'd like to smack him upside the head. Yeah, it's, it's, totally, it's totally not true, by the way. For anybody listening, it's totally not true. I know it's not true, but yes. I uh, found out I found out the hard way it wasn't true. Yeah. So I had this beautiful deal land in my lap. I need, It was a small deal. I needed to raise 85 grand, and I had a whopping two weeks to do it, and I didn't have the faintest clue of what to do. I just heard this woo-woo, you know, secret, find the deal, the money, find you, BS. Um, but I'd, I'd seen a few other things. I think that was around the time that, you remember that movie, Wolf of Wall Street? Sure, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio made it look like a lot of fun, picking up the phone and calling people up and selling them deals. And I said, hey, that looks like fun. I'll try that. So I picked up the phone, started cold calling, dialing for dollars, as it's called. I had no clue what I was doing, which was pretty obvious, and raised, very quickly raised zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> got rejected massively, got my feelings hurt, and, and quickly quit making those calls because it's it's no fun. So I'm I'm running out of I'm wasting time. I'm running out of time. And the clock is ticking. So I've I, I also remember somebody saying, Hey, you know what? If you need to raise capital. You need to go out and you need to talk to people. You need to network and schmooze and use your elevator pitch and turn every conversation into a real estate conversation. All this BS platitudes we hear all the time. So I tried that, right? Chamber of Commerce, B&I, Toastmasters, wherever the heck they would <laughs> let me in the door. I chugged in there and I had my business cards and I 30 second pitched everybody on my deals. And surprise, surprise, I raised zero capital there as well. By this time, I'm really running out of time, starting to sweat. And I came up with what I thought was a brilliant idea, Augustine. You let me know how brilliant this was. One part was pretty smart. The other part was really stupid. So the one idea I thought I had was, hey, if enough people see this deal, it's going to sell itself. That was a stupid thing. The smart thing I did was I said, well, hey, why don't I just really create a, a list of potential investors and market to them? That was smart. But the way I did it was really, really stupid. So I put together a one-page PDF overview of this deal and how they're going to make X amount and blah, blah, blah. And I I basically spammed that out to all 200 people. I can remember it was a Wednesday night. I had to, I, I had to close on this deal on Friday. So I sent this out Wednesday night, and I'm just praying. Get up Thursday morning. And this was the first thing that showed me any signs of life because I had a, a number of responses back to my email. I thought, oh. Thank goodness my answers, my prayers are answered. And then I started reading the emails. And they pretty much all said, hey, Dave, dude, I haven't heard from you in forever. And here you are hitting me up for money for a deal. Take a hike. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I obviously I lost that deal. I wasn't able to complete on that deal. And that, you know, that sucked. But I live in a small town, so I had some major egg on my face, man. So I ticked off my realtor. Obviously ticked off the seller. I tied up the property for a couple of weeks. I had a tenant already lined up for this property who had given notice where they're living before. Obviously, they were super ticked off. It was a disaster. And when the smoke cleared and I quit pouting, I said, hey, dum-dum, that did not work. You got to start figuring out this capital thing. And fortunately for me, I had a background in marketing. I said, instead of doing all this dumb stuff, what if I applied some intelligent marketing. And instead of scrambling for money, once I've got the deal, what if I get my investors lined up first and then go looking for properties? And why don't I use intelligent marketing 
to do the heavy lifting for me. And you know what, this, this trying to sell a deal cold isn't going to work. So why don't I do something different? Why don't I create some curiosity about what I'm up to, get people to self-identify and then have a meeting with them and show them what's all about and get them enrolled that way. So that's how I came up with this, this thing I now call the uh, money partner formula. And when I was doing those single family homes, raised just under a million bucks for those, uh, started getting into bigger deals, some multifamily properties, a few small development deals, raised uh, millions of dollars for those. But more importantly, I started working with other mom and pop real estate investors who are getting started with raising capital. And cumulatively, we've helped them raise well over $300 million in counting for their deals. Nice. So that's that's a very long answer to your short question. No, it's, it's, it's <laughs> great, though. Hey, you know what, though? That, the thing is, though, that, that whole thing about, yes, find a deal, the money will just show up. It's totally a myth. Hey, Augustino here, and I would love to connect directly with you. Text the word BOOKS to 844-428-1344 to receive weekly book recommendations from me. To your point, because if there's no, if you have no connection with your investor pool ahead of that, and you just, you know, email them out of the blue, even with a one sheet, you know, it, it doesn't even matter what the return looks like. If you don't have no credibility built up with these folks, you're, you're not going anywhere fast. You know, uh, exactly. And, and I get all these gurus that say that tick me off because here's the difference. You know, if you've got a platform already with thousands of followers or fans or whatever the heck it is, you know what? Yeah, it might work for you in that case. But for the average mom and pop who doesn't have that, trying to follow that same advice is, is absolutely worthless. Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. So uh, so that's good. So we went through some of the mistakes, but uh, but now you have uh, like a, it's like a five step program, right? On, on to raise capital, is that right? Yeah, we call this the money partner formula, and it's it's actually got like three phases, and each phase has a couple of steps in it. That's what this funny looking thing is behind me here, okay. um, and and that's that's what it's all about. So the when when we're working with clients, the first phase is all about setting the foundation, right? So we start with creating a a list, your dream 200 list of prospective investors, people that you have that pre-existing relationship with, friends, family members, coworkers, et cetera. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to have some way to communicate with them. So we recommend having your own investor-focused website. That's kind of like your online marketing hub. And then the third piece of the puzzle for that foundational phase is be ready to go with a good investor presentation, a good slide deck that you can walk people through. And what we got to remember, Augustino, is when we're first starting with raising capital, you're probably not dealing with super sophisticated accredited investors. You're dealing with your friends and your family members who do not know a heck of a lot about real estate investing. They do not know very much about structuring a deal or, or doing a real estate deal. And quite frankly, they don't want to learn that much about it either. So a big mistake I see a lot of people making is they overcomplicate it. They talk over people's heads. They, they use too much jargon, too much terminology, too much data, and they actually repel people that way. So we want to keep it super simple. So that's that's the foundation, your list of prospective investors, your website, and your presentation. Once we got that ready to go, now you're ready for the second phase, which is to launch. It's to press go. And the thing I really learned from my painful previous experience is we don't want to go in cold and just go for the jugular right away. We don't want to charge in like the bull in a china shop. So what we do instead is we reconnect with the people on that contact list in a personal way first to set the stage before we start talking real estate. We call this a warm-up campaign. Beautiful thing is you can automate a lot of this. You can set up three emails. Goes out pretty quickly, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Does the heavy lifting for you. It, it reconnects with people. You get a little bit of back and forth going with folks, and then we set the stage for the marketing that's going to be coming down the pipeline after that. Does that make sense, Augustina? Sure does. Sure does. Yeah. We call that your warm-up campaign. Once we got that going, now it's time to get going with the marketing. A couple of different things we do at the same time here. One is we get our clients a bunch of friendly practice presentations lined up first, practice meetings with, with actual prospective investors. But the way we do it, there's no pressure on the other person. They don't feel like they're being sold. And there's no pressure on you either. And because of that, the other person is going to watch your presentation with an open mind. And if you do it right, 
this is the fastest way to raise some some capital very quickly and get get people engaged. And then at the same time, we start with the the marketing, which I call constant, consistent, edutaining communication. What does edutaining mean? Just like the word says, a little bit educational and hopefully a little bit entertaining. Because again, we got to remember you guys, we are real estate, I say this with love and affection, but we are real estate weirdos. <laughs> Augustino, you live, breathe, and you exist around real estate. Heck, you're doing a podcast about it. People are listening to this. You know, that's not, everybody else is watching Netflix, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so we got to remember that. Our investors are probably watching Netflix, not watching real estate stuff. So we got to keep it super simple. Edutain, a little bit educational and hopefully a little bit entertaining and always with a clear call to action. Hey, if you'd like to find out more, click on the link below, book a call. Let's have a conversation and see how this can work for you. So the goal of my capital marketing is counterintuitive. It is not to sell any, any specific deal. The goal of my capital marketing is to sell people, create curiosity, get sell them on the idea of having a meeting with me. That's the whole goal. Then on the meeting, we present the opportunity. Does that make sense? It sure does. No, it sure does. I think yeah. it sounds it sounds to me like in, in the first really the first uh one or two steps there, you're you don't necessarily have a deal. You have uh a presentation of what a deal might look like, perhaps, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe it's like yeah. uh here here's here's the team, here's what they do. Um and uh if if we were if we would did have a deal, this is what the deal would probably look like and here's what the, here's what we would pay for and here's what the returns look like. It's almost like you're building credibility almost, right? Yeah, and, and what I'm gonna recommend is that you do actually have a sample deal in there. It can be yeah. one of the deals you've already done that you want to use as a case study. Uh, it, it, it should be something that you've been involved in. Because again, that, that brings up a good point because a lot of people think, hey, well, I don't have any real estate investing experience. I've never done a deal before, but I'll, I'll go out and raise millions for my first deal. Can it happen? Yes. Is it likely to happen? No. <laughs> right? It's, this is going to work really well for you if you've got at least a little bit of experience under your belt. Don't need to have a ton, but one successful deal is all it takes. And that's that's kind of the, the base level I'm talking about here is, is you got to have a little bit of experience under your belt. You need to be able to point to something and say, hey, here's what I've done. Here's how it worked. Here's what we're planning on doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's huge. Even if you if you get a uh, an investor, an investor that has experience, you, you rope them into the deal, so to speak, and mm -hmm. maybe you're doing all the heavy lifting to go raise the money, but you get to leverage their experience yeah. and say that this is your partner. So it also it elevates it elevates you if you're if you're going to be a if you're raising the money without any experience, but it elevates you because now Definitely. you're saying you're standing on the shoulders of giants, right? You're standing exactly. on the shoulders of someone who's actually done the deal before. Um, but uh, you know, th I think that's a big part of it, though. Is is that one thing I, I always say on our show? I've s I said this on our like we do. I do a daily, uh, daily thing as well. Is that you have to if you're new to this, you have to bring some value, you know. And if if, if a syndicator already has the ability to raise money, what do they need you for, right? Exactly. You know. But if exactly. you're able to go and you know use some of these techniques and go raise your own money for the deal. Hey, it's less work for the other guy to do, and he gets he gets a piece of the deal. Why not? He'll he'll do that deal all day long. He'll help you out, you know. But it's about providing value. I think that's the hardest part, though, right? Because uh, even though you have it's already in the box, you've done this for a very long time. I'm not going to say it's easy. I remember my first deal. It was, was freaking hard. It was very hard, right? Mm -hmm. not, it's not. It's not then easy. they got easier though. They got oh, easier. Oh yeah, it always gets easier. Yeah, the more deals exactly. you do, the easier it gets. Hundred percent. Uh, but uh, the first one always sucks. <laughs> it always exactly. sucks. The first exactly. one is, is always the worst. Yeah. So now, so I know that you mentioned before you had uh, you're trying to apply those those strategies of going to Toastmasters, going to all those different things. I mean, I, I chuckled a little bit because those are the things that I heard about when I was first starting. I, I did all that. I did. Well, yeah. I've done all of it. I did some of it. I heard about other people. You probably doing did. It. You probably did it better. Well, well, you did it better than I did. Uh, I don't know about better, um, but uh, but I think the, the result is the same. So maybe not. Um, but but uh, it's uh, I, I think how, how 
how do you get around alienating people then? Even even if you do it the way you're doing it now, great. So now with your process, yeah. I know you, you eliminated a lot of the, the 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 methodologies to alienate people, so they don't even want to call you or they don't want to pick up the phone if you if they see you're calling them, right? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, again, that's that whole warm up process there. That goes a long way because. You know, the first couple of messages in that process are all about just warm and fuzzy. Hey, it's Dave. Chances are it's been a while since we connected. Just want to reach out, see how you're doing. Here's what I've been up to, blah, 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 blah. How about you? What have you been up to? Let me know. Please reply to this email. Send that out. Send that out to a couple hundred people. You'll probably get 20 or 30 responses. Send out a, the next message, different format. You might get another 15 to 20 responses there. And then the third message is what I call your transition message. And that's where you give people the heads up that you're going to be changing the conversation to real estate. So if I was doing a transition message, this might sound something like this. Hey, it's Dave. It's been really good reconnecting with you over the last week or so. Just want to let you know that moving ahead, I plan on doing a much better job of staying in touch and letting you know what I'm up to with real estate. Real estate is something I'm really excited about and doing really well with it. In fact, I think our good real estate deal is the best way for everyday folks like you and like myself, to make an above average return on our money backed by something solid and tangible, a real piece of property. And hey, who knows? Maybe sometime in the future, you might even want to partner with me and share in some of the profits. But if you'd rather not, that's okay too. You can always click unsubscribe at the bottom of any of my messages. You'll be taken off my list immediately. My feelings might be hurt for a little while, but eventually I'll get over it. All right. In the meantime, if you haven't had a chance to get back to me, please hit reply to this email. Let's catch up. Send that out to all 200 people. And now if you've done all three of those messages properly, now you've set the stage and it's not a surprise. You don't come across as salesy or manipulative when you start talking about real estate. I want to take a pause from today's show to share something that I've been encountering. As I speak to many investors, there's this concern. And the concern is centered around the inflation we've been experiencing and the devaluation of our currency. Now, we've seen some of the highest inflationary periods over the past 30 years. That's up over 8%. Economists actually believe that inflation is closer to 20%. Some say it's even more. Now, what does this mean for you? Well, it means that money that is sitting in your bank account or self-directed IRA that's not invested in physical assets that hedge against inflation are losing buying power. That means that every minute, every second, that dollar is becoming less valuable. You see this every day. You see this in the groceries you buy, the gasoline you buy, everyday items that you're buying on a daily basis are becoming more and more expensive, and you're using a less powerful dollar to buy these items, meaning that dollar is losing value if it isn't put into a property that produces cash flow, just like real estate does. Now, our team here at Bulletproof Cash Flow has put together a series of weekly webinars that cover real estate investing like multifamily, net lease, and real estate development. Now, these are purely educational webinars. In these webinars, we talk about why real estate offers a powerful opportunity right now and why it makes sense to invest in these assets today. So if you're interested in real estate or want to have the opportunity to get involved as a hedge against inflation yourself, I encourage you to go to bulletproofcashflow.com slash webinars. That's bulletproofcashflow.com slash webinars. Now you go there, these, these webinars are 45 minutes and they cover different topics every week. We go over the things you need to know to avoid some of the common pitfalls when it comes to investing while getting you prepared to invest your paper dollars into a real physical asset. Now, if you can't make the webinars, just go ahead and register and we will send you a recording that you can watch at any time. And by the way, these webinars are entirely free. There's no cost to you. This is just something that we do to educate, educate our folks out there. So if you're enjoying this episode, please like and subscribe uh, to Bulletproof Cashflow. It helps the channel tremendously when you do. Now let's go ahead and get back to the show. This is like a blast. This is not an individual message, right? So, But it comes across like an individual okay, message. Okay, right? okay. That's the beautiful thing about email autoresponders. It can be personalized for each one. So one says, dear Augustino, and the other one says, dear Mary, dear Joe, dear... So it goes out personalized to each person, but you only have to create one message. Yeah, because that's that's the key. If they if if the other person suspects or if the target suspects, 
oh, this is just a, a blast, you know, forget this guy, I'm going to delete it, you know, or it's just another real estate pitch or whatever, right? So well, well, here's the thing, we got to remember, we're, to, to get started with, what I'm suggesting is we're targeting people in your existing network. So mm. friends, family members, coworkers, people from church, Rotary Club, whatever, you know them, they know you. So you're not going in cold, right? So they're, that's, that's why we have so few opt-outs from this campaign. Typically when we do this, this sets us up for a client, they might get three or four or five people opting out. They might get more over time, but very few off the get-go. And the whole reason behind that is, number one, the group of people we're going out to. Number two, they got that connection with you. Number three, we kind of tickled their curiosity with, hey, who knows? You might even want to share in the profits with me, right? So you kind of you play on that. And then fourth, we kind of give them a guilt trip. But if you'd rather not hear from it, you can click on subscribe. My feelings will be hurt for a little while, but I'll get over it, right? Yeah, Say that yeah, yeah. with a smile on your face, but it, it keeps them going. And then we've now we've primed the pump. Now we've set the stage, and now we can start doing marketing. Again, keeping it edutaining. We're not spamming them with deals all the time and saying, give me money, give me money. But we get that edutaining communication going out, drip, drip, drip. Every single week, something's coming out. So for example, first week of the month, maybe it's an electronic newsletter, then maybe it's a blog post, then maybe it's a video log, then maybe another blog post. So drip, 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 something different every single week. And uh, that's what's going to get people starting to pay attention, starting to open your emails, creating that curiosity, getting them to book those meetings with you. Yeah, nice. And these prospective investors, these are people you might that might actually be qualified or are they, or you just don't know? We don't know yet. That's the that's per yeah. that's part of the purpose of the whole the whole meeting is to see if they're qualified, if you need them to be qualified. So again, you work with a lot of syndicators and stuff like that, but I work with a lot of mom and pops. They're quite frankly, they're doing joint venture deals. Mm. So their partners are coming on board, bringing the cash and the credit and all that kind of stuff. So they're smaller deals. So it really depends on how you're structuring things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's excellent. That's excellent. And then and then what you're doing is um as far as the setup is concerned of all these emails. So you're providing the actual templates, the the setup or a lot of stuff. Are you are you using the systems as well or is that is your uh is your I guess your your client setting all this up? Like who actually does that work? Well, we I mean, that's what we do for our done for you clients. We have a couple of things. So we've we got a little bit of a basic training that shows people how to do this themselves. But our primary business is we set all this stuff up for our clients. We kind of become their their uh, capital raising marketing department, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> for no, for doing all of the marketing stuff. Hey, I think if that if you're able to do that and have all the automation, the tools, and the experience, that makes total sense to me, right? I mean, I think for for many folks out there, the the capital raising scenario is quite daunting. You know, so if you're Definitely. able to to help with that and already have it already boxed up and ready to go, uh, that's huge. You know, especially if you're using um, you're using the Mailchimp or Active Campaign or whatever it else you whatever the tools are, you have all the tools. You know what to use. You know what works, right? All yeah, I know that we 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 do everything for our clients, all the way from the database to the websites to the CRMs to the marketing. We set it all up. We send it all out for them. All they have to do is. Uh, show up for their meetings. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> With your perspective, nice. investors. Good, yeah. good. So, so I know that you mentioned uh, that your messaging. Uh, I think it was in phase three. Is is edutaining, right? Edutaining right. things, right? So, yeah. for um, and I know that that's a real big part of this whole line of business because uh, if if it were just uh, you know car racing or whatever that you put up a car racing video and it got a hundred thousand views in minutes, you put up something about right. making money and it doesn't. <laughs> You'd be like if you get twenty five views. Um, the only way to get over that hurdle is to make it entertaining. But how do you make something like that entertaining? Like what what sort of things is it like? Hopefully it's not dancing because I really don't want to be dancing on TikTok. Oh God, you don't, don't you want to be the next TikTok? <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd look good, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, thank God. Otherwise, we'd all be dead in the water. Um, <laughs> this Here's the simplest, a couple of a couple of tips here for people. Here's the simplest thing you can do. And it's again, this isn't entertaining like, you know, 
going to Cirque du Soleil or entertaining or going to your favorite comedian entertaining. I'm just, I'm just talking about making it interesting for the other person, right? So a couple of tips. One way to make something more entertaining is to tell a story about mm. it. Okay, so instead of just boring data and teaching somebody or showing somebody how to do something, tell a story about it, ideally from your own experience, and ideally with a few visuals if you can, right? Pictures, before and after pictures, this kind of stuff goes a long way because I don't care how advanced we become with TikToks and social media and all this kind of stuff. We're human beings and genetically we're predisposed to be attracted to stories, right? That's for millions of years, depending on what your beliefs are, for a long time. That's how human beings learn stuff was via stories. So if you can tell a story about something, that's going to go a long way. Simple things like just doing a selfie video of yourself, doing a walkthrough of a property. Uh, if, if you're doing some repairs on something, they're doing the before and after type stuff. So visual stuff, yeah, you're not going to get gazillions of views. You don't want that. That's not what we're looking for here. We've got a target group of a couple of hundred people. Out of those couple of hundred people, there are probably somewhere between five and 10 investors in there. We just don't know who they are or exactly when they're going to invest with us. But we're not trying to get all 200 people to invest. We're just we're trying to, we're trying to shake the tree and, and, and get the low-hanging fruit. Yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, the whole storytelling model is, is 100% true. You know, it's uh, prior to us having language, which is a fairly new technology for our species, we, 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 knowledge is transferred with stories. So you're absolutely right. It's all genetic, right? That's why, why do, why do people spend tons of money to go to movies and watch and sit around and watch TV all day? They're stories. It's all they are. It's a story. It's, it's a visual story, it's visual storytelling. So no, you know, that's, that is a great way to do it. So if, uh, if let's say for instance, um, you're, you're just like you're, you said a second ago, you're showing off a deal. Uh, maybe you can describe, hey, yeah, the seller was uh, was tough to work with, but in the end, everything panned out. And let me show you a little bit about what we're doing. You know, so maybe telling a story behind maybe the complexity of a deal. People love that stuff. They love that stuff. They eat it up. They eat it up. I, I think. Yeah, well, I, they, they love the they love the drama behind yes. it, kind of thing. So again, we again, you take a take a picture, take a page from HGTV. Right, you've got all these property shows on there. Nobody really gives a crap about how the hammers get swung. It's about the couple bickering about the color of the countertop or whatever the hell it is. Right, yeah. it's it's a, that's the stuff that's that's interesting to people. So, the more of that little human connection you can bring to it that, that sticks, that's the stuff people are going to remember. And at the end of the day, August, you know what we're trying to do here is we're trying to show our prospective investors that we are active real estate entrepreneurs. We're doing this stuff. We're in the trenches. We know what we're doing. We're having successful deals. And when the time and circumstances are right for them, we're the guy or the gal they should partner up with. Yeah. That's, that's the big focus. There. Well, and that's because you position yourself as an authority, right? It's, exactly. it's like, I think part of it is repetition. And when you do put out this material, I think, and this is a big part of it that is often overlooked is that uh, you can't sound like a newbie. You no, know, you really have to um, really live and breathe this stuff. And I think that's probably one of the biggest, the biggest hurdles is that uh, I know a newbie right away when I talk to one. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about him. It's, hey, I was a newbie too. You were a newbie. We all were, right? When we, it's like we we're born doing real estate. Um, but and some of us, some of us forget so much, we almost become newbies again. Right, right, right. You know, but there, there's certain there's certain dead giveaways that you really have to be aware of and and not do that. You know, so. Yeah. Um, but to be seen as an authority in the eyes of of the target group is absolutely critical. You know, and that means repetition, staying on top of uh, staying on top of the responses. I mean, all that stuff is is super super important. You know, super important. And it's a bit of a balancing act too, August. You know, it's it's between. Being seen as an authority, like you know what you're talking about, speaking knowledgeably about your strategy and your market, while at the same time being able to simplify it, or dare I say, dumb it down, so that a non-real estate investor can easily understand what you're talking about. Mm. That's that's really the perfect balance there, because it's just so easy, you know, once you, like at your stage right now, you can be talking about so much stuff and so much jargon and IRRs and NOIs and, you know, 
uh, cap rates and all this kind of stuff, assuming that the other person understands you when really they don't and they don't like feeling stupid. So they're not going to say, hey, what do you mean by that? And if, if, they, if we make them feel stupid, that's going to turn them off to the idea of investing with yeah. us. So it's a bit of a balancing act there. Yeah, you never, you never make your target feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's a rule. That's a rule. And then, you know, and, but, but hopefully, you know what, they, they invest with you and it turns out to be a great experience. And the next thing you know, which is the key part here is that they refer their friends and their family oh, to also sure. invest with you. That's, that's a big part of it is getting those referrals, testimonials, all that, and making sure that it's posted on your website, posted in your, uh, in your presentations. I mean, all those different things, right? Very, very key. Included in your marketing, for mm -hmm. sure. All of that. That's, yeah. That's yeah. absolute gold for sure. My yeah, that's right. That's right. And, uh, and that's like you said, that's, these are the types of things that you're walking through with, with someone to really help them get their kickstart, get, get it, get it off the ground. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Nice. Yep. Good, 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 good. So well, we covered a lot of stuff here. Um, what sort of bulletproof advice would you have for someone listening right now? Well, I think big picture, my philosophy when it comes to raising capital is don't wait until you got the deal to start raising the capital. Get your investor ducks in a row first, or at least at the same time that you're looking for deals, because that way, when you go in, you know that you've got the money to back you up. So don't don't be that guy or that gal that waits till the last minute and then you're scrambling for the money. I've been guilty of that. I told you the story. Be proactive about it. Get it up and going first. Get it up and going right away. And Augustino, I don't know if you mind or not. Do you mind if I give my new podcast a, a oh, plug no, here? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. So you guys, I just, I'm very excited. I've just started my brand new podcast. It's called The How to Raise Capital 101 Show uh, for Real Estate Investors. And you can check that out. The first nine episodes are like a mini course of my entire money partner formula. They're pretty short and sweet. So you can go through all nine of those episodes and that'll kind of flesh everything that we've been talking about here uh, out a little bit more. So again, it is the How to Raise Capital 101 show wherever you listen to podcasts or you can go to the website, which is raisecapital101show.com. Nice. Good, good. And you know what? That's... um understanding how to raise money, getting the soft commitments ahead of time to get those deals. Absolutely critical. I think get, lining that up is a smart way to do it. Don't wait till you have a deal. <laughs> get Line up at least a soft commitment first, and then you go ahead and lock up the deal afterwards. I think that's the best way to do it. Excellent. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, if you want to reach out to Dave, you can reach out via his uh, website at davedubo.com. Of course, check out his podcast too. If you're out there trying to raise money, maybe you're not, not sure where to, where to start, um, reach out to Dave. You know, I, I, can't, uh, I can't say how much his program is or anything else like that because I have no idea. Uh, but you know what? I, I think that any, any type of guidance that you can get, any type of, of um, help that you can get, from an experienced person that's been in the trenches to give you a kickstart is certainly worth the money to put out there if you're really serious about doing this business. Uh, I think that uh, if you're able to shave off uh, months or even years off of your capital raising, then you know definitely take advantage of it. You know we're here on this planet for a finite amount of time. There's a pro here ready to help you out. You should just go ahead and take them up on it, or at least have a discussion, right? Uh, anyway, guys. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you next episode. All right, take care. You've been listening to the Bulletproof Cash Flow Show. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to visit our Apple Podcast page and leave us a five star review. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from the show. For real estate coaching, events, and resources, hit up bulletproofcashflow.com. Till next time. No information in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this show are limited to accredited or sophisticated investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure and subscription documentation and subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice.